There we go. Okay, so we are about to go live. Perfect. Sweet. So, you excited for the very first episode of the TMD show? Oh, I'm so excited. We've been talking about this for months now. And Too long. It's finally happening. It's like Too Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm excited to, to get this rocking and rolling. We are live perfectly fine. Just making sure that my audio doesn't come through and distract everyone. <laughs> Turn the volume down. Got the iPad next to me. So, uh, uh, yeah. So, how, how are things going, man? This is like the first actual time we've actually like jumped on a call. This is, yeah. We've uh, Skyped, or not Skyped, we've uh, texted back and forth a few times. Well, more than a few times, but uh, lots of interaction over Facebook and such. But this is the first, well, almost in person. <laughs> <laughs> it's close enough. It's the best Basically, that we're going to get right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because well, it was it was Paul that sort of like connected us because you guys yeah, met in uh, Chiang Mai, right? No, um, I've never met Paul in person either. Actually, oh, okay. uh, we met uh, through Location Indie, mm. and actually, I'm not really sure how we first got connected, Paul and I. But uh, I was on his show, and then I asked him, "Is there anybody else you know that uh, might be a good fit?" And he said, "Oh, I've got the perfect." connection <laughs> sweet well i'm, I'm glad he connected are. us because uh yeah we've yeah. been we've been talking for what like two or three months now the yeah. show has put, sort of like been a long time in the works yeah. and yeah it's, a, it's about time we finally got on the phone quote the phone um <laughs> and recording this the very first episode yeah. of the new season of the new facebook live show that i'm doing because uh i've been doing like the facebook well sorry i've been doing the podcast for mm -hmm. Uh, since January, I think it was like the end of January, I started the podcast. Yep. And that went down really well, but yeah, I really wanted to get more people. Yep. I wanted to try this new Facebook Live thing. Everyone's been like ranting and raving about it. And yep. we've got Emma. Emma is watching live right now. Hey, Emma. Um, hey, Emma. Yeah, so yeah, we've been, I've been doing the Facebook, I've uh, been doing the podcast thing for a while now. Um, but yeah, the Facebook Live is new. It's a lot of fun. I like being on camera. I'm quite vain. I like seeing my own face. Um, <laughs> And I got you pretty got over there. You probably got like right now on my screen. I've got my camera's really small. You probably got that reversed. You're looking at the big picture of yourself there. Oh, I've got, got I've got, I've got OBS corner. open right now, so I've just got like both uh, of us are like equal sized. Right oh, now. equal. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, man, we got five seconds. Are you ready to dive in? Let's do it. Sweet. So welcome to the very first episode of the new Facebook Live Show. And today, Jeremy and I are going to be diving into things you need to consider when traveling as a podcaster. Let's go. Crazy mother. So I hope that the, the audio played fine on that video because I don't know if I don't think you could hear it either, could you, Jeremy? I could not. No. No. Yeah, I couldn't hear it in the background either, but I could I could see it playing on the little iPad that I got next to me. But but yeah. So Jeremy, thank you so much for coming on to the very first episode of the new Facebook Live Show. I was thinking about naming it something different, but I'm too lazy to do that, so I just rocked with what I decided to call the podcast in the end. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah, it is an honor to be on. I'm really excited for it. Yeah, me too. I'm, I'm excited to deep dive into to more of these conversations. I liked that fact that like the podcast is a great way to like meet and talk to people. And now I get to see people's faces all the time when I'm talking to people. And same for everyone on the show. So everyone tuning in live can actually see faces. And the fact that it is live, people can ask us questions. Yeah, I love yeah. it. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, Emma tuned in and she said, that the video played fine, so awesome. Awesome. Um, so cool. Jeremy, do you want to introduce yourself to all the do's and do that's listening 
right now and let everybody know what you've got going on and sort of like a brief travel history as well. All right. Uh, so my name is Jeremy Enns and I am currently based in Vancouver, Canada, but I do quite a bit of traveling, at least in the past few years. Uh, I should also mention that I, the, at least this past trip, was working for the past seven months about in Europe and I do podcast production and consulting and getting into some, creating some educational products around that as well. So in terms of travel history, I guess my first big trip was, I guess it's three years ago coming up on now, time seems to fly. <laughs> and that was a, uh, a cycle tour with a friend of mine through Europe. So uh, over three and a half, four months, we went through, I think about 12 countries from, we started in Iceland, then flew over to Norway and cycled from Norway down to Croatia. And so that was about four months. And then I spent close to a month uh, doing the the solo backpacking thing from Croatia to Istanbul and then flew out to Southeast Asia to meet up with my girlfriend at the time. And we spent another four months traveling around Southeast Asia there. Nice. So yeah, it was then uh, back, back in Canada for a year. And then in that time, I kind of, my goal was to build up some kind of location independent business and tried a bunch of stuff and just, about a year ago, I got this podcast production company uh, to the point where I could leave my full-time job here at the time and go traveling. So I went off to, did some house sitting in the UK for four months and uh, then was traveling throughout Europe and Morocco for the next three months after that and nice. now back home. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Sounds like a fun little travel spree. Um, yeah. yeah. I've I remember like booking my first like plane ticket to go abroad, um, and yeah, just those those feelings still come back every time. Like you book a new tri trip or you start thinking about yeah. a new trip, it, it's cool. Um, so before one one story short, very short ooh, story on go, that. Go, dive straight in. This is what we're <laughs> so, all about. So okay, before right before, well, I guess it was still nine months before I left on the first bike trip. You remember the the movie The Secret Life of Walter Mitty? I've never seen that. Never seen it. No, oh, never even good... heard of it, actually. Really? It's nope. got uh, Ben Stiller in it. It's a very good, like, wanderlust-inducing movie. Okay. And anyways, there's uh, a, a large, or maybe not a large portion, but, like, a, a pivotal kind of portion of the movie is based in Iceland. And there's this one scene where he's longboarding down these, like, sweeping Icelandic hills. And this was the day after I saw it. Or the day before I saw the movie, I just booked the, the ticket to Iceland. I'd go to this movie the next day, and I was just like... <laughs> this is gonna be awesome <laughs> and so that was that was the first the first time i booked the, the big plane ticket for the big trip and uh then going to see the movie in the theaters after that i was like oh man it's it's real yeah i, I remember mine my first plane ticket was I, I was i was working with some people or i knew someone that uh had just done like a three-month stint in china okay. and traveling and something i've been wanting to do since well before i even turned 18 and i was speaking to her about how she sort of like planned her trip and like how she went about like booking it and planning all that stuff and i remember i went into the the travel agents that she said she went to when she like planned all of this stuff and i left like an hour and a half later with my working holiday visa for australia like all done sorted yeah. and well actually tell a lie i had it i'd applied for it and i got it like three days later okay and then I think it was like a week or two after that, I went back in and bought a one-way ticket to uh, Cairns, Australia. Okay. And had like two nights worth of accommodation all planned and booked and paid for. Uh, yeah. And it was all non-refundable as well because we couldn't back out because I was extremely like flaky and timid and scared yeah. um, when I was doing, well, before I started traveling, that was kind of like what I was like. And yeah, man, com completely changed everything like even like tmd wouldn't be what it is today if it wasn't for yep. me going travel so i could just to let everybody know that this is being recorded live especially for those listening to the podcast version because we're gonna be ripping the audio for this to be a podcast so we're trying not to be too visual with what we're doing just to, so we don't upset the podcast listeners especially seeing as this episode is going to be about podcasting as well um, we don't want to disturb people, but if you are a podcast listener 
Make sure you tune into the live show next time so you can jump in and ask guests questions. And everybody watching live right now, if you do have questions for either of us, um, please jump in and fire away with your questions. So today we're going to be diving in and talking about our first experiences with traveling because that's what this season is going to be all about. But more specifically, I wanted to jump in and talk to you um, more about you know, podcasting on the road as well. And I know you haven't done any podcasting on the road yet. But you've got some experience with podcasting. You've done quite a fair bit of traveling from general yep. from the intro. So you know you're you're going to know some of the the things to be cautious about and to be wary about when you do go to travel and do your podcast. And I've been traveling and doing the podcast uh, for a little bit myself now. So I thought this would be the perfect topic for both of us to dive into. Um, but shall we dive into the podcast and stuff, or do you want to share some of your experiences traveling for the first time first? Ah, uh, whatever you feel, I'm okay with either. Cool. Well, I think we should just jump in with the experiences first, because all right, I think let's hook some more people in, mm-hmm. and then we can give them some podcasting juiciness uh, towards the end. Um, my my first experience traveling was, like I said, I booked a one way ticket to Australia. I had two nights worth of accommodation booked, which was absolutely ridiculous for me at the time. Now I just I that's my preferred way of traveling. I yep. like not really planning too much because then you're, mm-hmm. I know, I feel a bit restricted in what I can and can't do yep. when so like cool moments arise. But one cool thing that I did do is that I booked a, um, this like group tour around Thailand. So I spent a okay. month in Thailand living and traveling around there, turned into an alcoholic when I was there. <laughs> I, I, pro- I, prob- I probably drank like three times a year for like birthdays. Yeah. Um, before that, but yeah, I went. I think I spent 27 days in Thailand, and I drank for 25 of them. It was it was <laughs> okay. ridiculous. So lots of traveling around, lots of drinking, lots of partying. Um, it was a lot of fun, but it also was the downfall of my first online business. Um, mm. I did some like personal training stuff online, and yeah, yeah just took a nosedive. Thankfully, I did have the working holiday visa in Australia, so yeah. I had something to fall back on. Um, when the business went south, I could like get some work. And yep. to be perfectly honest, I'm kind of happy that I it did take a nosedive because that led to me becoming a scuba diving instructor or just scuba diving in general. Then scuba okay. diving instructor, got to see some awesome things. I did over 650 log dives. I took over 2,500 people on their first ever scuba dive. Yep. I, sp- I spent like, I think it's like 450 hours underwater or something crazy like that, 400 wow between 400 and 450 um and then got to live in fiji for six months which was oh, nice. ridiculously fun yeah um like learning the local culture getting to dive lots more drinking then wrote the drinking games bible <laughs> whilst i was there but yeah especially I, I i remember the nerves when i first got onto the the flight mm-hmm. uh, and then when i got there realizing it's nowhere near as bad as i thought it was going to be and so you were on your own yep yeah traveled on my own when I was in Thailand, I was with the same group of people for the okay. entire month there. Oh, um, that was the tour. Yeah, yeah, that was the tour. Yeah, um, apart from like the like two days before and two days at the end, I was on my own. Um, yeah. But yeah, with, when I was actually traveling around Thailand, I was with the same group of people, so I didn't know any of them before I got there. But I knew, got got to know everybody. Yeah, yeah when yeah. I was there. And so, what was the? You said that was led to the downfall of the first online business. Was yeah. that? specifically the drinking or just the whole tour like i'm assuming they're structured that you're kept quite busy and that you don't have like you can't just take a day while you could but you're missing out on everything if you have take a day or two to just work yeah I think the, the biggest problem was is that my entire business was service-based so i had yeah. to and it was all structured around like uk time so it was, it was a mixture yeah. of not really the tour itself but really the drinking yeah. um and then also the time zone difference because yeah, i had like like difference. 12 hours where i could you know work with people online and then i think thailand was like eight hours ahead something like that okay um so that those 12 hours then dropped to to four hours and then yep. throw in the traveling and then the more importantly the drinking and all the partying that went down that kind of led to the downfall of the business in okay. a single month yeah. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah, it was ridiculous. So what, what what was your first experience of traveling like? How did that feel? Nerve, nervous or anything like that? Yeah. So as a kid, we uh, my family did a fair amount of 
like traveling in the summers, road trips and stuff like that. And so I wouldn't count that as the the type of traveling we're necessarily talking about, but I think that was kind of gave me the the itch early on. Mm-hmm. And um, in what, uh, that was grade nine, I think. So I think I was 14, went on a, a school trip. It was kind of, it didn't really have anything to do with school. It was just one of the teachers at school was big into traveling and uh, had organized trips like this. So we went to, to Costa Rica for, I think, about 10 days, a uh, group of maybe 15 or 20 kids and including kids and chaperones kind of deal. And so that was a bit, you know, it's all scheduled out and you're there. You're not really on your own. You're only 14 years old. And mm-hmm. there's a few few teachers and adults there. But that was kind of the first more, you know, uh, different culture kind of experience and long flight away and, you know, just be kind of being having that a little bit of freedom at that age. That was really awesome. Mm-hmm. It's kind of sad. Like, I, I know that that was a great, great trip for me at the time, but I hardly remember any of it anymore. I, I remember little bits, but uh, uh, it, it's kind of sad to, to look back on it and remember so little of it. Um, so, but after that, the first well, actually, now I'm thinking of even more kind of travel experiences. <laughs> uh, some friends and I in 2009, so this was a few years after Hurricane Katrina had happened, we went down, three friends and I did a road trip down to New Orleans and volunteered their rebuilding houses for three months, I think about. And uh, so that was kind of the, the first real longer trip, kind of just completely on our own. And that was just a ton of fun four dudes in a car driving like I don't know we took two weeks to go down but I think it's something like 40 or 50 hours of driving down there and right you know north to south from Canada to the states so that was a real awesome experience and then being in New Orleans it's such uh yeah I guess you get to realize and driving through the states like that you realize how for those of us who don't live in the states we kind of have one conception of what American is and what the u.s is but going through all the different regions and kind of subcultures of the states it's really cool to to kind of see the variety that's there Mm -hmm. and and geographically and culturally and and all this so that was uh a really awesome trip as well and then uh i guess i still don't really usually think of that as my first traveling experience i do think of the bike trip back three years ago Uh, so that was the first time to europe um first time crossing any of the oceans and uh so that one was yeah like i mentioned before just with one friend of mine and about a year and a half earlier he had just sent me an email we had been trying to to come up with some trip we'd us and one other friend who we eventually did end up traveling together on this uh, most recent trip uh we'd been talking about all these places we wanted to go and and how to get there and how we were going to do them and of course we were all a few years out of high school when we had first started thinking about this and didn't really have the money but here we're getting closer to six, seven years and, you know, have some money now and are going to be able to do it. And so he just messages me one day, I think it was in December, January, in the middle of winter. And he's like, so, okay, before I get to this, just don't think this is crazy. Hear me out. I thought of the perfect way to visit all these countries we wanted to see and more bike trip. And just as soon as he as soon as I read that, I was just like, there wasn't any bit of like, you're crazy. It was just like, yes, that sounds awesome. (laughs) And both of us had been like into cycling quite a bit, him more than I, I did just like love biking, but wasn't into racing or anything or like, you know, road cycling or anything like that. Uh, But, you know, I I really love biking. And so we started planning this thing out and neither of us had any experience doing a long trip like that. But it's just kind of, I think we both figured like, well, you know, we'll be out of shape the first two weeks and we'll get in shape on the road. And I know some people who do bike trips really worry about training beforehand and getting into Mm -hmm. shape. And I think for both of us, that's just not what it was about. It wasn't like a competitive, it wasn't like we needed to get a certain number of kilometers or anything. It was just like, well, if we only get 40 kilometers, then whatever. Mm -hmm. It's not about how, how long we cycle. It's just about the, the experience. So yeah, we started planning this thing out and we went through a whole bunch of different trips. Originally, actually the, the trip had started, the idea had started out as around the world trip which I still want to do one day by bike I, by bike. Yeah. But wow, nice. it, it, it was good. We probably weren't prepared for that at that point. And, uh, oh, although you never know, I don't know. Sometimes I think you just, if you just went and, and kept going with it, you just keep cycling and you'd get prepared through uh, experience for it. 
Uh, but I, I think looking back, that uh, that was would not have been the best option. That. And uh, yeah, so it, it was like the, we first stopped in Iceland. Luckily, most people speak English there, but that was a bit of a a challenge just the first time well so the first day we went into the grocery store we had like an overnight flight so we got there at 7 a.m local time but it was like 3 a.m our time so we were just ready for bed but it's only the morning and uh going to the grocery store and just i remember being so overwhelmed like there's nothing in english and just like what what do i do what do i buy what do i get at the grocery store what are we supposed to eat here and it was a pretty sad uh <laughs> experience <laughs> uh or a shopping experience there uh looking back on that it was uh, not my proudest trip to the grocery store just like meager sandwiches with like nothing on them and uh <laughs> so that that was the first kind of like culture shock kind of mm -hmm. jumping into another country and realizing like oh yeah i guess i hadn't really thought about how to do any of this like basic normal stuff it's interesting you say that because that the like, same thing happened to me when i went to thailand but thankfully it's well pretty much everywhere especially in bangkok they got 7-elevens everywhere so <laughs> yeah, you like even, even though like everything's like still foreign and yeah. and they have sort of like the like the the what we would consider weirder like local things you yeah. still had sort of like the the more western things that you like you go in and you and you'd notice yeah. things and stuff like that but i think it's really interesting like your like first like big trip anyway was so like with a group of people that you knew and yeah. you know you're much more gung-ho on you know just i oh, would just see how it goes you know, you're with a group yeah. of people that you like yeah. and you know for me solo traveling i didn't have that um yeah. but especially when I got to, to Cairns and I was in the, the hostel that I stayed at. Um, Jason Turner, who's actually tuned into the show, I'm not sure if he's still listening, Jason, but he was actually somebody that I met at that hostel in Cairns and became really good friends whilst we were there, like playing games every day. We went on yep. a, a, like we rented a boat out onto the lake in Cairns, nice. uh, not lake, the river in Cairns, went fishing. We spent like nine hours on the boat and I think we caught like two fish in the first like mm -hmm. hour 45, the rest of it, nothing. Um, but yeah, it's, you, you meet a lot of people, even if you're traveling solo. So don't think that like your first trip, you have to go with other people. Yeah. You know, the, the people, when you're, when you're traveling, people around you are super friendly. So you're going to make a lot of friends very quickly when you're yeah. traveling. So now I think that's very interesting, man. Shall we dive into the podcasting stuff? So now yeah, we got, let's do it. we got a fair bit to talk about. I'm already like 25 minutes into the show already. Yep. It's uh, crazy how time flies. Um, <laughs> So one of the things I wanted to talk about really quickly is some of the equipment um, that we use because especially if you're traveling, like we said before we hit record, like you like to travel carry-on and so do yep. I. So you really have to be, if you wanted to travel carry-on as well, you have to be really thoughtful about what equipment that you decide that you want to take and what equipment you actually need for your show as well. So for example, like this microphone that I'm using is just a, a standard USB microphone that's plugged into my macbook pro yeah and that's really all i need i mean i do have a microphone arm that it's on yeah but there is a i do have my i have it as well yeah let me, <laughs> let me, let me see if i can pull out my my tripod so my tripod ah, i've yeah. got this and then the mic holder for it here for those of you mm -hmm. listening to the podcast i'm holding like a small desktop tripod and the mic holder that came with the, the microphone, which is an Audio Technica ATR2100. Um, yeah, you just plug it straight into your USB port. So, uh, do you say that's the same microphone you've got? Yeah, so that's not the one I'm using right now, That's but I do bring it. I actually bought that one on this past trip while I was uh, over in the UK just to have something there. And that's really what I recommend to everybody, even who's not traveling. Anybody starting a podcast, it's hard to go wrong with that $60 mic. I know oh, yeah. multiple people personally who are using that mic. That's what the mic they started with. And now they're getting like 10,000 plus downloads every episode. So it can take you really all the way. And uh, there's no need to upgrade past that. Yeah. Yeah. And it does have the XLR input as well or output. Yeah. So you can plug it into a, a proper like soundboard as well yep. if you wanted. But like you said, it's very cheap. I think yeah. I, I think I linked to it in the show notes, um, which is in the description for those of you watching live or for those of you on the podcast, tmdshow.com slash S1E1 
for season one, episode one. Um, I think a link to the one in there on Amazon is like $67. Yeah. Um, so it's it's very cheap and affordable uh, and really good quality, even just yep. for the USB feature. And yeah, all you need to do yeah. is travel with that, the mini tripod, and then the cable to go into your computer. So it really is very minimal, the amount of at least physical equipment that you need to run your podcast. So if you are traveling carry-on only, you should be able to quite easily make room for a tiny microphone yeah. like this. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really the only piece of gear other than your laptop that you really need mm -hmm. specifically for the podcast. So it's yeah, pretty easy. Yeah, the rest of it is all software stuff. Um, yep. I was using GarageBand for my show. I still use GarageBand as well to take the audio from this Facebook Live and turn that into the podcast. Still yep. use GarageBand for that. Um, and then when I was using Skype to do my interviews or to do the co-hosting of the shows, um, yep. I was using Ecamm's Skype call recorder, which is, we'll say back like $30 as well. Yep. GarageBand's yep. free. Um, and I also use Orphonics or Orphonic okay. for like the leveler. But yeah, that's yep. all like software stuff. It's not physical stuff that you actually need to run your podcast. Yeah, and anybody on Windows doesn't have access to GarageBand, but you can download Audacity, which is mm -hmm. an open source free program as well. So either either system, you've got free options there. And really the software is just the call recorder, the Ecamm call recorder for Mac, or there's one called Pamela for Windows. Both yep. of them are like 30 bucks and that's it's pretty cheap. So you can get into it for under 100 bucks really with all the gear and software you need to record your podcast. Yeah, and, and now, I mean, we're using Zoom right now to to do this conversation and with a free account in zoom you get unlimited amount of time with just like a one-on-one -on -one call like this mm -hmm. um, which i think is awesome if you wanted to bring more people on you have to pay for their premium version things like 15 dollars a month um yeah. so yeah you know you don't even have to pay for the ecamm record if you didn't want to uh you could yeah. use something like zoom where you can then record the audio it'll record the video for you as well you just need to rip the audio uh, yeah. and then yeah you can edit it and do what you need to do so yeah in terms of travel wise the things you need to consider is just the microphone itself and if you go with something super simple and cheap like this which just plugs in via yeah. usb you're golden it's very easy to travel carry on <laughs> with this you just it's more of a challenge figuring out what clothes you need to pack but that's an entire <laughs> different conversation entirely yeah well, especially when you're doing the uh, Facebook Live, you got to look good on the camera then. That's true, but I, yeah. I, don't, I don't care. Well, yeah, me um, <laughs> Okay, apparently it's not as big an issue as we said. If you're one of those people that care, then yeah, yeah. more job oh, matters. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so some of the, like, the, the issues that do come up um, when you are traveling, I know, like you said, you haven't really come across them yet because you haven't traveled doing your podcast, but you have traveled whilst running your business. And it's very similar to like everything else that would come up if you're trying to run your business online, you know, so like internet connection. Yeah. If you're trying, if you're like, especially if you bring on a guest for your show, then internet yeah. connection is going to play a big deal. If you mm -hmm. do a solo show, you're good. You just need to use like Pamela or Audacity, um, GarageBand to record your audio and then you can just upload yeah. it. Um, yeah. Obviously, internet connection will play a part of it, part in it then. Um, but yeah, having a good internet quality is not only important for podcasting, but it's also important for your business, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And there's different ways to get around that. So specifically for podcasting, there would just be, if you were wanting to record with a guest, there are some countries where it's just not going to work. So two that come to mind right away would be Myanmar. I don't know if you went there, but notoriously bad internet. Even like checking your email is nearly impossible. I think I went the whole three weeks and I don't know if I got online once, maybe. And at every place you go, it's like, oh, full bars Wi-Fi. You log on and just nothing loads. Or it'll like load and then drop it. Mm -hmm. And super frustrating. So places like that. Another one I was at more recently was Morocco. And I bought like 20 gigs of data for my phone to ensure that I would have at least, you know, some slow ability to upload and download files for mm -hmm. my clients. But doing a podcast, there would be no way... There was Wi-Fi in a lot of places, but it was pretty slow. Uh, you would not be able to record a guest conversation over that. So I think you do have to, if you're thinking about taking a podcast on the road, you, you definitely will want to research some of the countries. And if people have had issues with internet and maybe realize that 
you might have to make some concessions on where you're going if you want to keep the, the podcast or your business going. Yeah, and it also depends on how long you're planning on being in that place yeah. as well because you can do things like you can like batch out if you if you do yep. interviews you can batch all the interviews and then you can do like yep. the intros and outros on the road and then it's literally just mm-hmm. uploading it but even yep. if it is a slow internet connection you know you can just leave it in your hotel room hostel yeah. whatever and just leave it to upload um yep. it's not so bad but yeah doing the interviews is you know that's where the internet connection is going to be an issue and it was uh, the same yep. thing happened for me when i was in fiji um the internet connection was 3g at very best and mm-hmm. it was still very very slow um yeah. so yeah thankfully i wasn't doing the podcast at the time but yeah that would have been an issue especially doing something like this even though we're doing like facebook live so we need even more um yeah. like internet bandwidth to be able to upload video live but yeah. just doing that yeah, like a simple skype interview would have been a nightmare yeah. <laughs> trying to do that in fiji but it was fine because Fiji was beautiful and I absolutely loved it. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess there's those trade-offs. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, internet connection, yeah, definitely something you need to to consider. And then I think definitely the the biggest one to consider, um, which I think we'll probably just like tie the show up after this, um, is definitely sort of like the, the surroundings that you're in when you're trying to record your show. If you're the type of person yeah. that wants a show that needs like complete silence in the background, then that could be, or no, not it could be, it will be an issue at some point <laughs> yeah. when you're on the road. Um, yeah. Thankfully, the the type of show that I do, it's like travel based. So having background noise taking place, it's not so bad. You know, it shows like, this is what life is like on the road, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. blah but if you're doing a show where like background noise could be an issue, then again, traveling whilst you're trying to do your podcast, you're going to have to come up with some things that you could do to reduce the background noise. Like I actually heard, actually, actually saw somebody record an entire podcast with like a duvet over them. Oh, yeah. Just to yeah. try and like muffle out as much as the background noise as possible. Um, but yeah, background noise could yep. play a an important part in, you know, the quality of your podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And I usually, so you might be recording a guest, an interview, something like that. And you might be somewhere in public and the internet is great, but you have that background noise. And so, like you said, some shows that's okay. But if you're doing that type of show where you do have a guest on, that's not really something I would recommend where the guest maybe is having better audio quality than the host is in this case where there's a, a big difference. If you're doing an in-person interview and there's background noise, that just adds to kind of the authenticity and kind of places the conversation. But if it's a, you know, online call, that's probably not going to sound the best. And obviously, like, that's a, a challenge you face doing doing anything online, um, at least work-wise, while traveling is finding places. Maybe it need to be quiet, but, you know, if you need the internet, you're needing to find places where there's internet and that has outlets and it's just a, a constant trying to balance all these things <laughs> yeah it's uh like you like you said when like the guest's audio quality is better than yours it does have uh like an effect and impact on your show and what people think of it if it's just like the odd episode then i wouldn't worry about it too much just like let yeah. your audience know what's going on you yeah. say i've had to record in the coffee shop or i've had to do this had to do that um when you're when you're doing a show but yeah depending on the type of show that could definitely be an issue yeah for sure cool do do you have any like final things you want to to mention um regarding this apart from like the equipment and like the noise and internet quality um i don't know if there's anything specific to to traveling while recording your your podcast i think those are some of the definitely some of the challenges and like you mentioned i think batching is it's always important but when you're traveling it's doubly so yeah so i would i would definitely say you know before you leave on the trip even get four episodes ahead or whatever and you try and maintain that throughout the trip even if you're gone for a long time mm-hmm. just try and always keep that little bit ahead of schedule and because you you probably won't but yeah. you know you can do whatever you can to, to try and maintain that yeah when when you find that one place where it's quiet has good internet quality you get on as many calls <laughs> yeah. as you possibly can yeah exactly and, yeah and you, and you batch that stuff out i remember when i launched my podcast i did 28 interviews before i even 
published anything. Yeah. So, but I was publishing three episodes a week at that time as well. But yeah, I had that like backup, and you know, if things went wrong, you know, internet went down, or I had to go on a trip, which which did happen. I went to like Texas for a little while, where okay. I didn't even touch my computer very uh, very much. Yeah. Um, but I had everything all recorded all the interviews done all i had to do was find 10 minutes to do the yeah. intro outro and then upload and it was just those like the three four minute intro the three four minute outro that i needed like the perfect background noise yeah. to do that um and then yeah then the internet quality to to upload it but but yeah, yeah. I, th- I think you're right like batching is definitely going to be important when it comes to running your podcast when you're on the road especially if you know you're traveling to places where the internet quality is going to be bad. Background noise could be an issue. And especially with the internet nowadays, you can find all this information out before you leave. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, it's definitely things that you need to, to consider and be wary about, think about before you hit the road. And then obviously everything we mentioned about equipment as well. Go with a simple USB microphone um, and you'll be good to go. Now, before we jump into the rapid fire question session, I know you have a guidebook that breaks down so sort of like all the internet, uh, not internet quality, all of sort of like the <laughs> equipment and software and editing a show and all that sort of stuff. Do you just want to give us some more information about that really quickly? Yeah, so it's actually just been released this past week and uh, it's called the Cut the Bullshit Podcast Gear Guide. And it's basically everything you need to know about the gear you need to start a podcast and there's options in there for every budget and so you can find something for like what we talked about the you know less than a hundred dollar setup with the audio technica atr 2100 and one of the call recording options or the free zoom recording option so that's under 100 bucks and then we've got everything in there up to you know four or five hundred dollar microphones and mixers and audio interfaces and all this kind of stuff and software so Really, everything you need to know about gear is in there, and I tried really hard, and I've gotten some good feedback on uh, making it so that the average person can understand it, and it's not super technical. And there's a few, okay, there's more than a few, like, maybe somewhat corny jokes. Maybe they're good. I don't know. <laughs> there's some humor in there. <laughs> it, it is pretty good. You sent, you sent me a copy to check out to get, you know, you wanted some feedback on it before, you know, you published it. And it is a very, very clear guide and very simple to go through for, for sure. I, I really liked it. Awesome. So yeah, the, you can find that at gear.asceticproductions.com. So that's gear.asceticproductions.com. And I'm sure that's going to be in the show notes it is already on the pages live if you're watching because you can also, i've even embedded this facebook live oh in boy. the show notes page even for those listening into the podcast you'll be able to check out the video replay on the show notes page too um but yeah the link to that guide's there as well and then if you use the code fist bump or one yep. word you get 10 bucks off of that guide as well yep. sweet so dude thank you for coming on no problem Before thanks you go, for having me you are more than welcome. But before you go, we do have the rapid fire questions to go through. And anybody watching live right now, please feel free to fire questions our way as well. But I've got 10 questions for you. Are you ready for them? Let's do them. I really need to get some like soundboard effect. And yeah, have, like, yeah. Like some, I don't know, some like game show music or something to come up. And maybe some like visual effects too for the, the live show now. Oh, there you go. That's something to look into for next week. So very first question. I want the, f- the, the first answer that comes to your head. So, first question, what's your favorite country that you've been to so far? Um, <laughs> okay, I'm going to go with Ireland. Ireland, sweet. Number two, what's the last YouTube video or movie that you watched? Um, so, it's not technically on YouTube. It's on Vimeo, but I've been watching the... Well, I watched both the series Long Way Round and Long Way Down, which is the actor Ewan McGregor and his friend Charlie Borman, who's also an actor-producer, and the first one was their motorcycle trip around the world from London to New York mm-hmm. through like Kazakhstan, Mongolia, Russia. And the second one, which I just finished the other day, was uh, from John O'Groats in Scotland down to Cape Town, South Africa, again on motorbikes. So I've been, uh, well, a friend of mine just bought a motorbike this over this past winter, and he's been uh, kind of in my ear about getting a bike and <laughs> going on a trip up to alaska next summer so <laughs> we'll see I'm, th- I'm thinking about doing my bike uh license when i go back to the uk in september okay yep. um cool number three what's the weirdest thing that you've eaten 
Um, I don't know that I have eaten anything super strange. Wasn't uh, nothing really in Thailand that was out there. I saw all the snakes, snake whiskey and all that kind of stuff. I have eaten frog legs in New Orleans and also alligator in New Orleans. So kind of funny that both two of the stranger things were actually in the States, but those might be some of the, the stranger. Like it. I like it. Uh, number four, mountains or beaches? Mountains for sure. Number five, if you could meet one person, living or dead, who would it be? So I have this, well, okay, I'm going to go with this one because it's on my kind of uh, life quest list. And I would really love to jam with Dave Grohl of the Foo Fighters. And I, th- <laughs> I think that would be amazing. Yep. So I'm going to go with him. Nice. Uh, number six, are you a day person or a night owl? It changes over time. I'm going to go right now. It's definitely day. And I find that it uh, depends on the kind of activity. I find like I'm more productive in the day, but more creative at night. So right now I'm, I'm all in the uh, productive business growth phase. So very much day. <laughs> day, Sweet. Uh, what is your go to pump me up song? Oh, boy. That's the song that gets uh, you excited to do something. Oh, it would be something, some kind of like hardcore metal. Probably my favorite band in that genre is Misery Signals. So I'm going to go with something by them. And let's say the song, The Failsafe. Okay. I would totally recommend checking Avenged Sevenfold, How, oh, to, yeah. How to the King album. And if I want to listen to some rock music to get me in the mood, listening to Shepherd of Fire, How to the King, or... Uh, this means war three awesome tracks that will get you pumped up if you like metal music uh, sweet number eight what is your favorite non-english swear word and then what does it mean you would you believe that i've never asked anybody to teach me any non-english swear words what yeah i find that hard to believe i'll give you my favorite one okay and it's mangi chinana which is virgin for motherfucker Fijian, oh, okay. Yeah. Mangi Chinana. I like that one. It's, it's, a, it's a good one. Uh, yeah, the, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a funny story behind that as well, but we'll get into that another time. <laughs> uh, number nine, what is your favorite podcast to listen to apart from this one if you were listening to the podcast replay, not live? <laughs> so lately, I have just discovered, oh, actually, it was you who told me about it. And oh, it was. Okay. I, know, I know the one that you're going to mention already. <laughs> and it's my dad wrote a porno, and I've just finished up season one, and I realize that there's two more seasons at least now. Oh yeah. And I don't know if I will listen through all of them, but the first season was just gold. Okay. <laughs> so basically, the premise is this guy has well, he's not discovered. His dad has told him that he's written this erotic novel, and that's being generous with the word novel it's uh quite amateur <laughs> but <laughs> really in in every aspect the writing and the porno aspect like it is just the and him so him and his two friends read through a chapter every week and it's just <laughs> hilarious you just have to listen to it. it it is brilliant and i would definitely recommend listening to the next two seasons all right it, yeah i would skip the footnotes episodes uh, oh, okay if you don't want to listen to all the extra episodes but yeah it just gets cruder and more creative <laughs> All right, as, as it goes. So if you enjoyed the first one, you're going to love the next two. Um, cool. And finally, the last question is, can you give me your best travel story that you have in under five minutes? Okay. So I mentioned this before the show, but it's a bit uh, tough to even pit start, know where to start. So I'm going to ask you for a category of travel story that you would like me to give you Ooh, something uh, on i want one involving alcohol okay one involving alcohol i think we're gonna have to go all the way over to laos and so i was with my girlfriend at the time we were there this was probably we'd been in southeast asia two months i think laos was our Laos was our second country, and this was toward the end of Laos. And we were up in the very far northeastern corner, like right across the border with, uh, is it Vietnam there? I think it's Vietnam, but China is also quite close. Mm -hmm. And I think the town is called Vieng Sai. And it's this like weird city that seems almost abandoned. I think they call it like the city of victory. And there's these huge statues like 
communist style, like propaganda statues and stuff like that. But nobody lives there really. And it had been just like bombed out by the U.S. Um, back in the war that happened there. <laughs> just like it's it was in, in rough shape in a lot of ways. And then it kind of got rebuilt as this city of victory. And then nobody ever lived there. And so there was like not really many tourists there. I think there was us. It was really hard to get there in the first place and had to take all these like hitchhike and weird buses and stuff. And so there's us and like two other, maybe like one other couple and then one other pair of people. And we had done this like tour of these like caves where the people had hid during the bombings. And then that evening we had gone to this Indian food restaurant, which is super good. And they just have like on the wall, these lined up bottles of Laotian whiskey for like a dollar or something like that. (laughs) <laughs> and so there was, I think, and the, the one couple was French and then there was us. And then I think there was one, where was that other guy from there? I want to say he was like, uh, German or something like that. Oh no, there's this old, older, he was like in his seventies and he was from, I think Belgium and he was cycling from Belgium to Vietnam, I think. And he was like an old, older guy cycling all that way. And then there was the owner of the Indian restaurant and some local guys and the, the owner was Indian originally, but living there now. And so the, with these one bottle, one dollar bottles of whiskey, it was, uh, there was a few of those down between the group of us and it just got kind of zanier and zanier. The, uh, cause they were, everybody was kind of a bit of a character there. It seemed well, except myself, of course, and, and my girlfriend, like I, I thought we were the tame ones for sure. And everybody else, it just got like weird conversation as there's like six or seven now bottles of this whiskey, which was just terrible. Like it just burned <laughs> like nobody's business. And strangest thing next morning, no hangover, nothing felt like great. And it was just like quite the, quite the memory. I, I know the, uh, at the end of the night, the, the French guy, his girlfriend was like trying to, we were staying at the same kind of guest house, area and so we're like walking back down the main street and then he just like she's like kind of carrying him along and pulling him along and he's like no no i want to go back and and have just have one more with like and they'd like shut down the restaurant or every already <laughs> and uh and so he's like pulling against her and then he like breaks free and he like runs back to the the bar and it's like closed and he's like crying outside <laughs> and it's like oh boy it was quite the end and she's just like oh jerome oh and then she just like left him <laughs> and i think he like came sauntering back uh, a little while later nah man i that's that's an awesome story thanks for sharing i <laughs> i i remember i've got like a a bad memory of whiskey in thailand as well um that kind of put me off of all whiskey now. No. now it's one of those stories or one of those moments where you're like you've had too much of it and now just like the smallest drop of it like brings back all those memories and like it just yep. turns your stomach and it was it involved chugging whiskey from the bottle outside of a i oh don't know this tiny little bungalow yep. in, in thailand uh, i think it was called like sang sang some whiskey um, sounds familiar yeah yeah and I just remember like the the tour guide there was it was like chugging it and like people were counting and he got to like like six seconds and like other there's like challenging other people to beat his six seconds <laughs> and other other people were doing it and i just like took it and started chugging i got to 15 seconds Whoa. and it was fine at the time it started to burn after like 10 um but yeah every time i even touched the whiskey after that yep. you know it just br- brought back the, that that feeling again of like how you know i want i wanted to like i felt like going hurt like after yeah. <laughs> after doing it yeah. but yeah, yeah. I, I just remember I had like it's probably about like 12 people around us like counting as we like chugging yeah and it, and thankfully it had the little like plastic stopper in at the top so you couldn't like yeah. pour too much at once so yeah. it wasn't as bad as what it sounded um but still it burns yeah. And, and yeah I, I can't touch whiskey again I just like the slightest drop just <laughs> like, like uh, no can't do it yep um, yeah that, that, that's, that's that's what whiskey does to you at least in my eyes no uh, cool Jeremy thank you so much for coming on it's been absolute fun chatting with you for the yeah. very first episode of the new TMD show Ooh. where can people find you online so you can find all of my podcast related stuff at aestheticproductions.com. So again, that's A-S-C-E-T-I-C productions.com. And if you go there, you can get a free download of seven common mistakes that are probably hurting your podcast, which I found that 
after working with dozens of podcasters and analyzing like hundreds of shows that really there are these few mistakes that kind of new podcasters are often making that are really hurting their show. So you can get that for free there. Uh, you can also find me at jeremyens.com. That's E-N-N-S. It's my last name. And that's kind of got links to some of my photography stuff as well as the podcasting stuff and a bit about me as well. Sweet. And all of that is listed in the show notes for today's episode. So if you wanted to check all that out, tmdshow.com slash S1E1 and you'll be able to check all of that stuff out. Dude, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on and we will have to jump on some more calls again in the near future. Yeah, let's do it. Thanks for having me. Take care, dude. Yeah, you as well. And there we have it, dudes and dudettes. That was Jeremy and I's conversation all about our first experiences traveling, well, for the first time and our thoughts, what it is that we actually did for our first bout of travel and I'm sure Jeremy's got a lot more um, planned in his life as well I can see him nodding away in the background Uh, so dude again thank you so much for coming on and you guys this season is all about people's first experiences traveling online uh, traveling online people's first experiences traveling full stop Uh, but then we're also going to be tying in like people's like running the business online at the same time just like today where we talked about podcasting Uh, If there's anyone in particular you'd like to see on this show, like I said, this season's all about our first experiences traveling. But if you want to see anybody on this show in the future, just shoot me an email, luke at thatmarketingdude.com, and I'll try my very best to get those people onto the show. And if you are listening to the podcast, please subscribe to the show. Just hit the little subscribe button on whatever player you're listening to this on. And if you are watching this on the Facebook Live, Make sure you like our page or come join us over in the Facebook group so you don't miss a future show. I will be setting up Facebook Messenger alerts, uh, hopefully by the next episode. So even those you're listening on the podcast, um, you can sign up to that later on and get notified when the show does go live so you can tune in and ask questions to our guests when we're live and let the awesomeness continue. So guys... I'll catch you in the next episode where I have no idea who we've got coming on next, but it's going to be a lot of fun. I promise you that. So guys, have a great day. Have a great week. And I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out. Fist bump.